Well, hello, this is Brent, and we are back for a very special Pilates hour uh, with Ken Endelman and Elizabeth Larkham. And so I know a lot of you are excited, and I've seen some expressed uh, gratitude to see us getting together as a reunion <clears throat> of Polestar from early days. And so uh, we're just ready. We got a bunch of pictures, and I want to start. If there's anybody that doesn't know the three characters on the screen, <laughs> Maybe I could, <laughs> could start there real quick, but um, Ken Edelman is the owner and founder of Balance Body Equipment and everything that they represent in our profession. Um, a huge leader in the Pilates industry and uh, dear friend. And Elizabeth is, you know, I was thinking back, Elizabeth, when, when I first started, I think you had told me that there were less than 300 or something like that Pilates teachers that could be counted for back in 1989. But Elizabeth has been a major leader in Pilates, uh, Pilates choreography, Pilates education, uh, fascia world. I'm, I'm holding her book right here that uh, is a great book that's out on the market. And she's writing another book right now. And I'm grateful that I got asked to do a contribute a case to it and just some great work and uh, great leadership in the Pilates education world. So it's a real treat to be here. And the reason why we're together is because back in the late 80s, um, when I got turned on to Pilates by my ballet teacher during PT school, I was sent to St. Francis Hospital that had just opened up a dance medicine center underneath the direction of Dr. James Garrick. And that's where I first met Elizabeth Larkham and Patrice Whiteside. And they were running the Dance Medicine Center there that had a beautiful Pilates center that had equipment that was manufactured by, at that time, current concepts, um, you know, from Sacramento. And that's sort of where the three of us started uh, getting together. I trained under Elizabeth for a while, and we got some exciting things to show you that. Uh, but that's that's the beginning. So Elizabeth and I <clears throat> became partners in the Polestar Education, and Ken has always been at our right side and supporting us. He even came up with the name Polestar. So <clears throat> if you want to know where the name came from, a lot of people think it was either me pole uh, vaulting or uh, pole dancing, which I never did pole dance, but I did pole vault. But the name actually came from us talking about how do we get around, and maybe this could be our first topic, how do we get around the the lawsuit that was happening at that time of using the P word? And we were just thinking like, is there another word that has a P, an L, an S, a, a T in it? And uh, Ken had come up with the word Polestar. So I don't know, Ken, you have it. You have any memories of that? I have a lot of memories of that because we were running around trying to figure out what we were going to use to call what we do if we couldn't use the word Pilates. And so we were, you know, this close to maybe not using the word Pilates and trying to describe what we did and how we did it and, but not being able to have the word for it. Yeah. So, um, uh, in, in, in the event that we lost the lawsuit, that was going to happen. We either going to call ourselves something totally different, or, um, we would have to say that, um, we teach exercise techniques based on the historical principles of Joseph H. Pilates. Well, um, speak, I think we have, Elizabeth has found some archives that show that that's exactly what we did call it <laughs> for a long time <laughs> to avoid the wrath. Uh, Elizabeth, what's your memory of, of uh, those early days of finding the P word? Right. I remember being in at my family home in Austin, Texas over the winter holiday, the Christmas holiday, but I don't remember what year it was. And I remember talking uh, with talking with Ken and um, he was he had been doing his um, searches to find uh, available names and had noted that Polestar meant uh, for the for the, the sea going uh, the sea venturing the Polestar meant uh, the north star the guiding star on which you can set your course so he yeah. had found that to be available in the exercise realm and uh, we were off and either running or sailing depending on how or swimming depending on how you look at it yeah, what a great name. Um, we love that name to this day. It just has so much meaning to us. And, you know, you and I, <clears throat> when I think of the actual attributes of the North Star and you think of it from an astronomical standpoint and you think here's a star who knows how many galaxies away, but it's just perfectly aligned always with our Earth axis, even as it changes. It's always our true North. So 
we we thank you for that name ken appreciate that let's go to the first slide because i think the slides are going to sort of bring up all the discussions that we have and i'm going to have elizabeth talk about this first one she found right uh the the dance medicine center at center at uh part of center for sports medicine at saint francis memorial hospital in san francisco uh, was the first place where Pilates was part of a clinical organization. And Ken Endelman, then of Current Concepts, was the provider of the equipment that was ordered by Dr. James G. Garrick, um, orthopedist, orthopedic surgeon. And um, as Patrice Whiteside and I uh, noted that there were more and more people um, interested in the, the pioneering techniques that we were using in the dance and sports medicine area, uh, we realized it was time to start a, um, a, an education program where individuals, interested individuals from their clinical settings or their uh, dance academic settings could come and uh, study the very specific dance medicine, sports medicine techniques that we've been developing at St. Francis Hospital. So here you have a uh, the letter that uh, was was written to Brent, um, who was then uh, completing his had completed his physical therapy uh, masters at University of California, San Francisco, and in November of 1989. Um, we agreed that Brent would come and do a um, an education residency for five days in the Pilates dance medicine area, and that uh, we would teach him the techniques that we had developed. Now, can you imagine that there in 1989, that five days would be sufficient time to teach Brent everything we knew? The mind reels. I, I remember one of my first exercises that you gave me was the uh, was on the box on the reformer going into Swan with my pubic bone suspended on the edge of the box, and I sort of thought I'm going to do it no matter what. I mean I'm I'm going to do it no matter what. But I sort of thought like this might be the litmus test that she was just sort of seeing like is he just being a physio or is he really in this and really want to learn? But I remember doing it thinking like, I hope this, I hope the carriage doesn't slide underneath me and uh, cause major trauma. But it was, um, but you know, you bring up a really good point. And that was up until this time, there was no formal education. I mean, I think you and I, you know, this is what we came to agreement. I mean, we had a week together and, and what did that week, you know, represent? Like we did so much. And then in the next couple of years, two, three years, I mean, I think you and I attended and had the opportunity to study or at least spend a weekend with almost every one of the elders that were active at that time. So we went down to Marie Jose Marie Blum's place with, um, I was trying to remember her partner's name at that time. Quentin, Quentin Giuseppe. Quentin, Quentin Giuseppe, Giuseppe. Right, yeah. right. And we yeah. saw Carola yeah. Trier. Yeah, that was it. But I think my favorite was when we all went down to uh, to New Mexico and had a chance to spend time with Eve Gentry for uh, over a week. And of course, we had a chance to be with Ron Fletcher and with with uh, Romana. We spent time with Jean Claude West, who was a second generation, still do, um, of of Corollas and just a great biomechanist. But it was interesting that you know at that uh, time. Pardon me, Brent. Brent yeah. Jean Claude had studied with um, Mary Bowen. Oh, with Mary Bowen. Mary oh. Bowen, yes. Okay, thank you and, for that And also, also with Kathy Grant. Jean-Claude okay. West goes to Kathy Grant and Mary Bowen. Yeah. Got it, got it. Okay, see how my memory goes. Um, but interesting enough, I was thinking of the fact that I had all these stick figures of draw, trying to draw the exercises as fast as we could when we were in those observation workshops, usually. And I think that's where we sort of said, like, we really need to continue to expand the education product. And I don't know, Ken, what do you do? You remember uh, having those those dialogues in the early '90s? I, I I do, I do, because you know, one of the questions that we always got is, you know, where to get training, and and there was no training. Um, in in up until that time, and I think you guys should talk about this because it's like. If you wanted to become trained and to teach Pilates, you basically had to stand by somebody's side and do what they told you to do yeah. until they told you that you were good enough to teach. And that was that was the program. Authoritative and, models, yeah. 
Yeah, and 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 it was you guys, you and Elizabeth, that kind of came up with the curriculum and and something to base it on that made sense to have a real program. There was no program. Wow. Yeah. So I I thought it was great because it it brought some it brought credibility and it brought some some structure to to Pilates that didn't really didn't really exist. And we have some goodies coming up to sort of show some of the early advertisements of the education products that we did. But let's go ahead and go to the next slide, um, Melissa. Speaking of, <laughs> so that was in 94, 95. And look at the look at the nomenclature on, look at the name there. So, you know, Pulse Education presents, and then it says based on the principles of J.H. Pilates. So we were in the heat of the lawsuit already and uh, mm -hmm. people being called to the carpet on it. And, you know, I was just trying to remember, like we had we had a number of different products that we would sell, like two or three products that we were out marketing and, and selling to, to people. And it was just a different era. Like we went, I remember going to Angela Crowley's place in Colorado we would present at any I Adams at any physical therapy conference, a number of hospitals around the globe, and we were globe trotting. I mean, I think for the next six years, not that we don't globe trot now, but we were we were. I think I was counting in 1999, Elizabeth, you and or 98, you and I had traveled like 38 weekends out of the year together somewhere, um, teaching together, and it was just you know enormous demand that was happening at that time. Yes, you know, Brent, we were so fortunate uh, to be with, with the three of us and the perspective, that unique perspective that each person brought to the, to the Pilates world, to the work. We were so fortunate that we could come up with a, a model of education that was inspired by the model from physical therapy education, modular, uh, sequential, and we could apply that model to the Pilates education where it had never existed before, which made our, our balanced body, our current concepts, balanced body education, Polestar products, it made them accessible to people who, as Ken had mentioned, were not able to um, apprentice to a Pilates uh, first generation teacher. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's that was... Uh... It certainly was our intention. I think part of it too was just our struggle of trying to gather education and training on a continual basis and just realizing there wasn't really a, a formal education model. Melissa, what, take us to the next slide. Let's see what surprise we have next. Ah, bravo. <laughs> Ken, you look you look exactly the same. That's just so not fair. Uh, I'm not so I mean, sure. other, other than some white hair in there, you have this full head of hair and this uh, slender body. It's amazing. So tell us about this, Ken. So this was kind of a this was an in between time. Um, this was so again. This is in the this is in the nineties, and this is in the struggle to come up with the name. So so we were current concepts. And current concepts kind of goes back to my waterbed days. And it's kind of a generic name that would support a company that made waterbeds. It would support a company that was just kind of contemporary. And it would support a company that, you know, um, it, it made Pilates equipment. So it, it worked out to be kind of a cool name. Um, and if it was current concepts and we manufactured Pilates equipment, we could go with that, right? But if it was current concepts and we manufactured equipment based on the principles and historical concepts of Joseph H. Pilates, that didn't go that well. Because remember, there was no internet in those days. This had to go under the phone book in the yellow pages, and there was no heading under historical concepts of Joseph H. Pilates. So nobody could find you. So, so then we decided, well, we needed to change our name so that we would have a name that would kind of support what we did. And that's why we came up with Balanced Body. Um, but what we did here was, this is a, a conference that we did where we provided the equipment and Pulsar um, and, when, and when people came to conferences, the big question, especially at APTA, is where do I learn this stuff? And so, so a lot of what we did, a lot of the shows that we did together, we, you know, we brought our equipment and then we, and then Polestar was representing us and you guys represented us to the world. It was, it was, it was a, a great combination for us because if you just sit there and you just try and sell machinery, nobody cares. Yeah. 
and vice versa. I mean, mm -hmm. we couldn't have done it without the support of the equipment. Mm -hmm. So absolutely. Great, yeah. great. Let's go to the next slide. I know we got a lot of good slides here. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I think I think Shelly's on. Is Shelly, are you on in voice? I'm on in voice. I'm on in heart and voice. Yay. Mm -hmm. So of course, um, you know, Shelly Shelley had worked at Polestar Physical Therapy and Pilates Center. Well, was, back then it was Anderson Physical Therapy mm -hmm. um, in Sacramento and had come on very early and really became an apprentice under Elizabeth in movement. And so, um, you know, Shelly's always been a sponge and now she's a major leader in the Pilates industry. But um, I would love to hear sort of what you guys' thoughts were back then as far as you know, being in a physical therapy conference and demonstrating the equipment for a bunch of physical therapists and well, back it. back in the beginning, I remember I mean, a really vivid memory was driving to Reno with Ken and going to the physical therapy conference there. And I thought, I don't have, I don't know what Pilates is. Somebody's going to ask me about Pilates, and I don't know what to say. So the two-hour drive up to up to Reno from Sacramento. Um, Ken was just the best, the best teacher of, you know, okay, well, what do I say? What about this? And what information is really important and things about the history? And it was great. And then um, listening to Elizabeth in every course that I could, could get to um, just strengthen my knowledge of the, of the work and the choreography of it, but also going beyond that. And I think that's maybe where my unique perspective on this work comes from is most of the people that we were working with were either athletes and dancers or people that had significant problems from spinal cord injuries or, um, you know, surgeries and orthopedic injuries and things. And so I was introduced really early to every different option that there could be for movement for this particular person. And so um that that's that's probably my strongest my strongest memory and a big thanks to all three of you because i wouldn't i certainly wouldn't be where i am without uh without each of you and your contributions i i, I just want to chime in here a little bit um i, I first want to say that you know when i first decided to learn about Pilates, it was in the 80s and i went to st francis hospital for like every thursday for like two hours or three hours with Elizabeth, Elizabeth would like run through the repertoire so I could see how people's bodies reacted with the machinery and how, how that all worked. And, and that really gave me an understanding of, of what was supposed to happen. And then later on in the 90s, um, I used to go to Anderson Physical Therapy at, was it 6 a.m. or 7 p.m., 7 a.m. with you, Shelly? And, and it, it was early. <laughs> Pardon? It was early. It was super early. And, and that's really at the point to where I really began to appreciate and like, really love Pilates at that point. And you were putting up with me because I was distracted and sleep deprived and everything, but you showed up and 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 I just want you to know how grateful I am for that. You that know, it's so interesting. Fun. In this picture, there's some new equipment that you had just released, mm -hmm. Ken. So we just released the, the tall clinical reformer with a different foot bar. Mm -hmm. The machine that Elizabeth's on, um, at that time, and I forget what we called the the first metal reformer. The TSSR. The T TSSR. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And then also tubular you have tubular steel studio reformer for teaser. Yes. Tubular steel studio reformer. And then the combo chair also was a pretty new piece at that time, um, yeah. coming away from the standard. So those were three. You know, there we had the T bar that's underneath there, and you know, the more adjustable foot bar that could ha could work with a larger variety of uh, patients and clients and ages. And I remember us being in San Francisco with Steve Giordano and Romana, and we were sitting around the table and we got into a little bit of a beef. And there was somebody who was asking questions about the, the history of the uh, lawsuit. And I don't really want to spend too much time there, but we were talking to Romana and I asked the question, and of course it was probably like 90 or 90, it was, it was early, it was before I think even Polestar was maybe right around the same time. And I asked, you know, when you go into high back arch on the reformer, and we were talking about adaptability of equipment, how important it was to have equipment that could be modified to the size of the body. So I said, 
you or Steve Giordano talking to Romana doing a high back arch on a reformer is very different than me or Ken doing a high back arch on the on the reformer. Like it just structurally it doesn't make sense that I would need to have the same the same element and the benefit of the exercise. I would need to have a piece of equipment that could be modified. And of course, we never arrived at um, any kind of agreement, but it was at that time that I realized how valuable um, Ken and Balanced Body is to the to the our whole profession of Pilates teaching to be able to make sure that you know we we want to be client centric not method centric in the sense that oh i have to be on this piece of equipment even if i'm six foot two that was designed maybe for somebody that was five foot eight or five foot five right at max and so i always appreciated the fact that if elizabeth and i came to you and we said you know it'd be great if we had this proprioceptive t-bar or if we could adjust the foot bar this way or if the shoulder pads could be put into a wider thing when we go into high back arch for people that are a little bit wider mm -hmm. and you always listen you still always listen but I think that here's just so early on, you were willing to make modifications to the equipment based on the needs that we presented to you. Right, um, Brent, I'll chime in here with to, con uh, to continue with what you're speaking about. That uh, Ken has uh, Ken has always been a, a collaborator and a collaborator with other innovators and a collaborator with movement explorers. And uh, he has a significant uh, collaboration with Jean-Claude West mentioned earlier. And it was uh, Jean-Claude West that worked with Ken to, uh, uh, to bring the proprioceptive T-bar um, that goes now with the clinical reformer. And that T-bar is underneath the uh, photo down to the right where Shelley is kneeling. And it was Jean-Claude West that brought the, the T-bar to Ken as well as the, uh, the rotator discs. Yeah. Ken would, would Ken would you speak about that collaboration and your um, innovation with equipment? Well, it's very very cool. I mean, it's exciting because it, you know I think a lot of people have ideas and they're just afraid to share them because they're afraid that the idea is worth a million dollars and if they share it then they lose the money. And most of these things just make the, make the equipment better, but but they never generate huge amounts of money. Um, but some things are really kind of cool, like rotator discs were really, really, really nice. And we ended up coming out with different size rotator discs. Um, and they became really, really popular because there was so few ways where you could do rotation in, in, in Pilates work. Um, and, and the, you know, but what I was going to talk about, is, so it was really kind of fun working with, with Jean Claude because he was the first guy that made a combination machine. Um, you know, and he had, he had a reformer with a tower and a chair attached to it. I um, still have made, one. Pardon? Still I still have, have one of JC Reformers, yeah. Yeah. So um, that that worked out really well, and and and, uh, and it was it was great to work with them on that, and and then and then uh, with with uh, with you, Elizabeth, with Brent. I mean, between the two of you, you guys came up with the clinical foot bar. You guys, I mean, the the idea, like, right? Why can't we make this foot bar adjustable, right? You know, that was that was from you guys. The you know the um, the, the the split pedal I think that came from Grant or Elizabeth I can't remember when you guys raised their hand but it, it that was from you guys and yeah Elizabeth doing the rotation with the with the swan on the yeah on the chair I mean, I, mean, I, I still tell people that you brought a saw to St Francis Hospital and just took <laughs> and took, the, took the, the pedal of the chair in half I, I think that's exaggerated a little bit <laughs> yeah. But you know, but but I mean, not all this. I mean, the, the whole thing with the foot plate, you know, that was a, that was a, you know, it's actually controversial because now as as I listen to all these people, and there's like three different people that claim discovering the foot plate. But but uh, but how we came up with it is by you know when I was at St. Francis Hospital, and you guys said, well, we need something because people's feet are sliding off these bars and hitting us in the shin, in the thigh, right? So um, so a lot of those ideas came from from you guys, um, especially in the, in, the, in the very beginning. And it was just, it was kind of really fun for me to be able to look at something to figure out how I can make it better. And you know. You know, I know that it worked because lots of people used the equipment and lots of people got better. Awesome. Let's mm -hmm. see what else we have, what goodies are in front of us. Melissa, can you give us another? By the way, we have some comments of people just expressing how much gratitude they have that the three of us are providing them. Uh, uh, Amy says, three amazing people right here. Thank you all for all you do. Um, Yvonne said, thanks extended to the three of you for all you have done for today's Pilates. Uh, Flavi says, hello, nice to see you all. Can you explain more about the details of the lawsuit that I mentioned to you? So we'll probably get there somewhere in this conversation. 
And then um, Claudio said, interesting, it was a balanced body uh, <laughs> before it was just balanced body. So just a, another iteration, right? Another, another iteration, yes, exactly. Yep. Um, Lindsay said, this is a filling my heart. Thank you. It's my birthday today. And this is a really nice gift to be able to listen into your memories. Thank you all for helping and inspiring me grow in who I am today. Christy said, do you all understand that without the four of you, Jean-Claude West, Jean Still, we wouldn't be here today. Thank you. Um, and Cindy said, I love hearing all the history. Thank you so much. So, Elizabeth, you have a memory of, of us filming this, taking these pictures. It is in Sacramento on K Street. I don't exactly, know if what you're- Exactly, Brent. Um, in, the, in the early days of Polestar Education, our our hub, our home studio was, of course, your the Anderson Physical Therapy Clinic on K Street in downtown Sacramento, where uh, it was your clinic and your mother Fern was in uh, <laughs> greeted people in the in the administrative area, and uh, Shelley was the uh, was the Pilates educator for everybody from at uh, twenty four seven. So on, uh, you would work there Monday through Friday with your, your patients, and then Saturday and Sunday, or I, then I, I would drive up and stay at Ken's house and stay up most of the night, uh, the two of us, you know, working on the handout for the weekend. Yeah. And then, um, then we'd uh, put out the refreshments and open the doors on Saturday morning, where Saturday and Sunday, we had the, we had the, the class, the education uh, module of the weekend. And by this time, um, Ken had a, uh, Ken, did you have Wendy as your first marketing director or was she still your um, marketing consultant? She was, at, at that time, she, I think she still wasn't, um, she wasn't fully, she wasn't employed for us full time. She was just as a consultant. Yeah. Right, right, right. So uh, we were fortunate, Brent and I were fortunate that uh, it, you know, it was, it was time to graduate from the, the the small um, quote brochure. Trifles. I still I still I still have a fax of that. I'm going to pull it out in a second from behind the barrel. And uh, Wendy put on this. Um, she arranged to have a photo shoot for the the cover of the Polestar brochure. So we um, we engaged a few attendees from the course to stay later on the afternoon. Wendy set up the lights with a photographer from one of her friends, a photographer from Sacramento. And here we staged this um, this experience <laughs> of the comprehensive Polestar Pilates environment. Take yeah. it, Brent. <laughs> yeah, I just remember that, you know, one of the things that you and I both had felt so strongly about and and going back and doing research now on learning was always teaching in the full environment. It wasn't, you know, let's get our MAT certification, let's get our reformer certification, get our trapeze certification, you know, and I remember you feeling strongly about it and I totally agree was the idea of having that multi-dimensional learning that we were able to provide in a studio setting where everybody got to move around in a circuit training. And it was quite a novel idea from in the early stages of education. So I know when we looked at other education bodies and um, I just remember thinking of how important it was to understand the relationship in the studio between the equipment. And years later, Shelly and I have tripped onto a book called Make It Stick. And the book was very clear about how important it is to have that kind of learning versus having just the isolated apparatus learning. So it was a very cool experience to come back and have research years later sort of support us on that. And then from the advertising piece, I'm trying to remember the guy in the front was a husband, I believe. I don't think, I don't remember if he was in our training and he was, I don't think he was in our training. Was he Elizabeth? Wasn't he just? Uh... Yeah, uh, Brent, you're correct. Um, he was one of those, um, adjunct family members that uh, we needed in our... So we need a guy inside uh, this Yeah, picture. exactly. And that's that's his wife standing oh, with them. her left hand around his pelvis. Yeah. yeah. Great. You have something so in your hand right now, Elizabeth. Pardon, I, Ken? I, he had probably never been on a reformer before the picture. <laughs> it doesn't matter, Ken. We're, we're um, educators with a mission. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. So here, here we have the facts of the very first Polestar um, folded uh, brochure. Facts. Voila. Some of those guys aren't going to know what a fax machine is. Oh, you could tell them, Ken. You're a little <laughs> bit older than I am. <laughs> uh, but not much. I think, wasn't it short for a facsimile? <laughs> yeah. 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 This was 1996. See, we were moving up. We were moving up from the, the paper trifles. Now, um, Elizabeth and I should have taken stock in Kinko's um, at that time because we practically lived there. That was our office um, so many times <laughs> wherever we would go. We were up till like three in the morning finishing our manuals or making the edits and the changes. And like you said, seven o'clock, <laughs> get the food in there and open the doors. Awesome. Let's see what we have on the next slide. Ah, Ken, you want to talk a little bit about this? No, because I, I think you guys should talk about this one because you know the first time I don't I remember seeing this cover, but I don't remember seeing the article. So, um, and maybe I just forgot about it. Well, so it was it was a PT and athletic training um, journal and advertisement, mm -hmm. and you know we got to advertise the you know the TSSR. Mm -hmm. in there and we did a photo shoot and Elizabeth and I were the models for the TSSR for Perform Better. So it was, it was our first introduction into being in magazines that were outside of our own industry, going into the physical therapy industry. And of course we had made friends with, and Shelly remembers these names a lot better than I do, but like Dean Spragia, yeah, I don't know if you remember Dean, Mm -hmm. um, Dean was always a good friend of ours and, and sold the Pilates equipment to the physical therapy industry. And uh, I, I know, Shelly, what's your fondest memory of Dean? I know you guys no. had a pretty good relationship. Is she still on? Yeah, no, I'm on. I just, um, yeah, it was just that whole the whole process of, of, you know, showing up, you know, to a show and you never know who you're going to see, but then there's that standard group that is always at every conference doing the, you know, doing the work of spreading, um, spreading whatever knowledge, you know, they have, whether it's equipment or movement. And uh, yeah, there's a, some great memories around those shows. Wow. You know, it's, it's funny because I just remember that, that Rajla was sold to a company in Ohio and we still work with them. Yeah, yeah, we had there's another company in the East Bay that we worked with as well that sold equipment for you mm -hmm. to a lot of the physical therapy around. Mm -hmm. But I, I remember Dean being the main one. Like he really mm -hmm. took to us and we hung out, we'd go out to dinner and stuff afterwards and he would come yeah. with us sometimes. And they um, opened the door for us to Kaiser. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Ken Ken was the T S S R the uh the early the foreshadowing of your Allegro one? It was, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, we were trying to figure out a way to create a reformer that was functional, but but not as labor intensive to build, so we could hopefully save save some money for our customers. And we came up with the TSSR and the personal reformer at the same time. Um, but then when we came up with the Allegro two, the Allegro two was just a better machine. It was sturdier, it was more reliable. It was just it was just nicer, so we 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 actually just decided to stop making the TSSR and the personal reformer. Well, we have some good pictures of when we first introduced the the first teaser uh, to in Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> we got some good pictures coming up. Let's let's move forward a little bit quicker on some of these pictures here because I know we got a lot to go through. Um, this was a major venue for us in our network. Yeah, the. Mm -hmm. Um, International Association of Dance Medicine and Science was fundamental in, um, you know, sort of finding people that were like-minded and that were looking for education and just so many bright minds. I think of like Marshall and I think of MJ and Jean-Claude West was in that group. And it just that it just Marika Molnar. I mean, the group is just some of our best friends and and. Uh, professionally in this mixture where we could all feel comfortable from the manufacturer to the dancer to the teacher to the uh, director of a company to the doctor the physical therapist athletic trainer I mean it just was such a great memory that we had in so many of these conferences I don't know if you want to share anything about I Adams 
Um, Ken, you still go to the I Adams meeting nearly annually, yes? No, you know, I, I, I did, but they, it, it, they always pick the weekend that's opposite our Chicago Plays on tour. So, so I've missed the last probably 10 of them, but the, they are going to oh. have one in Denver this coming, I think, yeah. fall. So I, I'm going to, I think I can do that one and be in Chicago. And it was so close to I to PMA that it always I know for yeah. like Elizabeth and Shelley and myself it's just so close and a lot of times overlapped but I miss them. Yeah. So we still sponsor them because they do really really good work in terms of keeping dancers dancing longer and healthier and and they do career transition counseling and all that cool stuff. So I think I think as a they're they're really a great organization. I and I wish I could go to the the conferences. I just I just can't. But I'm trying to next year. Awesome. Yeah. Let's yeah. go to the next slide. I think we have some memories of Tel Aviv. So this is a typical day for us, right? <laughs> well, actually, it is. I mean, we live life to the fullest. So my recollection of this is we all played hooky from, <laughs> from the meeting. We found the most amazing tour guide. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we just took off and had such a great time. And we had Marika Molnar with us. And, you know, you, you couldn't think of, you know, a, a pretty diverse group if you thought of like spiritual, religious backgrounds coming together. And we had, this is one of my favorite memories of all time, was the trip to Israel that first time. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the tour guide was amazing. And so what we do the next day? Wait, you mean the, the important conference that we were attending at that point? <laughs> We hired him for the second day. We took out right. Didn't we go out two days with him, or did we only go out one day with him? It seemed like we played hooky from the from the meeting to go out and yeah. More. Well, it did. We we did have to be there for one day, um, yeah. but I don't think I don't think either one of you guys had any official capacity at at the meeting. And 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 we I had gone there. And my my my, I was thinking at that point that you know this is not a good time to go to Israel. There was violence happening. There and stuff, and and I was going to just basically go there, go to the conference, stay in the hotel, and maybe go to the beach. Um, and then one of you guys came up with the idea: well, maybe we should go someplace and check this place out. Maybe we should get a guide. And then and then we found that guy. Um, I can't remember his name. It was probably Mordechai or something like that. But but he um, but this guy had been uh, he had he had participated as a kid in the when Israel was founded, he had been in every single war and now taught history. Now was had taught history and then became a tour guide. And he was the best guy because he would just walk us through all these cool places and he would say, oh, if you're a Jew, this is the story. If you're a Christian, this is the story. If you're a Mormon, this is the story. You know, if you're a Catholic, this is the story. And he would tell us all the opposing perspectives on all the different epic events that were going on there. And, and I was just soaking it up. I was, I was really excited. I asked yeah, him one military great. question, and he said, "Ken, even if I knew knew the answer to that question, I wouldn't tell you." So, <laughs> but he had been in all of those wars. I mean, that was the interesting thing. Like as on the ground. Um, yeah. Yeah, that was a good memory. Yeah, not and one of course, these guys that just talks about it. He was there. Yeah. So, yeah. It was cool. So we were the yeah the the four of us. Marika was with us also. We uh, we went and and it was getting to be evening, and so we went swimming in the Dead Sea. And mm -hmm. then he told us about the the uh, beneficial health effects of the black mud in the Dead Sea. So, so we were we were in the midst of taking a mud bath there as the sun was going down. It was uh, just really gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. All right. Let's see another picture. Ah, uh, so now that makes. Let's see. This is in Long Beach. We we agreed that we were in Long Beach. Elizabeth, you remember this event a little better than Kenny and I did, <laughs> but it was with Marie Jose Blum, who's there in front, and Alan Herdman. Marika was there. What was this event celebrating? Um, Ken, wasn't it uh, the the launch of the of the Joseph H. Pilates Foundation? Was that it? Yeah. Yeah. So the, the, the background behind this is really kind of simple. So we were at a, a place in history where we were really thought that we weren't going to be able to use the Pilates word in any, in any way what's, what, anyway at all in terms of how we told people what we do or how we marketed ourselves. So the concept here is that if we created an organization that paid homage to the man, to the creator of Pilates, we can speak about the man 
and use his name when we talked about him because you can't take the name away from the man um, under any conditions. So we created the Joseph H. Pilates Foundation so we could at least at least refer to and give credit to the person that developed this exercise technique, which we were close to losing. So so that was that, that was the Joseph H. Pilates Foundation. And then we had an advisory board, and, and, and Elizabeth, you were on the advisory board, and Brent, you were on the advisory board, and Rejo Say was, and, and, and Alan Herdman was, and there was a guy named Jorge Alvarez that was on it, and, um, and a couple other people, but we really wanted to have an international board to give the organization credibility. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So well, that's happened? sort of Flavi's, Flavi's question was um, just a little more history on the lawsuit, and I know we've all a lot of us are like we don't ever want to talk about it again it was, yeah. it was such a long you know eight nine years and the result of it was that um and i'll just say it in a nutshell so i can answer the question for flavi mm -hmm. and anything you want to add to it feel free to add to it but um there was a faction in the Pilates world that felt that uh you know that they had purchased the legal rights to the name and they were enforcing it and so you know, they believe that and that's the action they took. And what it did is the other 80% of the Pilates teachers uh, no longer were able to use the P word in their business or as in a Pilates teacher. And so that's really where the movement and Ken was without a doubt, the leader of uh, the movement to be able to get Pilates to the state of being a generic word that allows now hundreds of thousands of teachers and millions of people to participate in Pilates. And if it hadn't have been that, it, I really do think it would have, you know, Pilates probably would have crumbled, you know, it, it wouldn't have survived that if we did not get to that point. And again, um, Ken and a number, Deborah Lesson, and there were a number of people that were really big leaders. Um, and it was a privilege to be part of that movement, but um, Ken, you really did lead the way with that. And so the good news is, and was it 1999, when, when did it fall? It was it was actually the year 2000. Yeah, it was 2000. Yeah, and then PMA was started like right off the 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 toes of that. So that's mm -hmm. when the Pilates Method Alliance started, and the idea there was okay, we make Pilates generic, but now how do we preserve the integrity of Joseph and Clara Pilates? And so, hopefully, that's a, enough in a nutshell without dropping too many names. But um, mm -hmm. let's see what we have uh, extra on the pictures going here. Let's see what the next one brings to us. Ah, okay. So this is another I Adams picture, I believe, right? I this think one so. is this one is in England. So just good memories. Uh, new faces in there. You see Marika again, Donna Ritter to the um, to my right, and Marshall Hagens. And I'm trying to remember the name of the two on the far left. Do you remember the names? I I know she's been part of I Adams forever, and I feel bad, but hopefully you're not watching the program and. <laughs> if you are, tell me your name. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next slide. Ah, let's see, 1996. So these let's are see. in the yeah the the early days of the early days of education. Even uh, be, before we had uh, designated our pole star curriculum, uh, we were teaching instructional and cueing techniques for the balanced body mat program. And Kathy Mirakami who's uh, been the director of Pilates at the um, Rancho La Puerta forever, and um, also forever, sorry, Kathy, but also launched the gyrotonic gyrokinesis program there. She invited the two of us to come down and teach. And this is the, uh, this was the, 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 uh, the first handout that I found of our teaching together, 1996, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. All right, let's keep going. All right, and I here see. we have the um, more of our um, our overnight uh, labor at Kinkos, uh, where we would uh, where we would have a a course on August 17th at uh, Brent's alma mater, University of California, San Francisco. This was where we um, we really um, made our mark as teaching uh, using the Pilates principles techniques evolved from the concepts of J.H. Pilates but applying them to a variety of small props so that physical therapists and athletic trainers and other movement educators could use rotator discs, the resistance ring, the balance board, foam roller, and physio ball to, um, to give their, their patients and their clients 
the advantages to uh, what normally would be reserved for um, progress in a clinical setting? You know, that was an important time because we were able to connect with uh, Nancy Bill, Dr. Bill, and um, Darcy Umford had a little bit of connection there as well in the Bay Area. But I was just doing a lecture for USC last week with Dr. Rob Landell. And we were remembering wow. that that was when um, Rob also around that same time, a little before that, actually, I think he came in even like in 94, I think is what we were yep. looking at. Mm -hmm. But we had the support from, you know, great people like Nancy Bill and what was that it? Rob Landell, a quote on our first brochure. And oh, here's see? what he says. Here's what your friend says, I, your colleague. I put almost all of my patients on the clinical reformer. The reformer provides my patients with a full spectrum of weight bearing and closed chain kinematics to speed up rehabilitation. <laughs> and you know what, Elizabeth, he still does. And he still says that. So he has been so supportive in making sure that every, every student that goes through USC's physiotherapy program, he's now the director, um, that goes through that program gets exposed to Pilates as part of their fundamental training. So um, he's been very instrumental in in uh, singing that song for Pilates and rehabilitation for now 26 years, 27 years. That's awesome. Okay, let's keep moving on. Let's see what else other goodies we have there. All right, so these now we are we're formally organized as Polestar now. So these are we started having get-togethers and mini conferences. I see some some great pictures in there on the right. Um, next to you, Elizabeth, is Angela Crowley. And uh, then Dov Cohen, who's now in Australia, a father of two. Alex Bolander, who's been running Polestar in Northern Europe for 25 years. Cynthia McGee from Miami. And then down below was a dinner we had um, in Sacramento. And of course, Lizette's in the front there. What, I think Elizabeth? that's still Miami, Brent. That's that still Miami? Miami. Yeah, because Dr. Mason is in there. And oh, Dr. Mason's people. in there. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That was uh, that was one of our first events in in Miami. Uh, yeah. Lisa uh, Alicia Becker is there, and Lisa Stoltz. Yes. And you know who else is sitting right next to Lisa Stoltz? Is Christiana Call, who now is the director of Hunter University's physical therapy program. And she recently called and said that she finally has the authority to really put things in place. And I just put that together because Lisa Stoltz, um, partner in the, in the uh, scoliosis training, is Hagit. And Hagit is a professor for Christiana Call. So that would be an interesting picture where this is, you know, 20 years before Hagit and Lisa connect, but Lisa is a, a teacher for um, for Christiana Call. And we met Christiana Call through Marshall Hagen's at Long Island University. So just I sort know. of those those circles. And um, behind me, uh, Elizabeth, what's his name from San Diego? Wasn't he? Oh, uh, don't I? Oh, D David Hall? Is that that's David Hall? That's David, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good, good times. And then Kenny and I, of course, looking uh, young and dapper there on the left. Let's go to the next slide. Always. While we're going to the next slide, um, before we talk about these pictures, I got a couple more comments that have come up that I want to share here. So um, let's see where we're at now. So Vladimir from Brazil said, first, congratulations. So glad to see those who built such uh, a path for us. My question is, besides study Joseph Joseph's work, what motivations do we have to start Polestar and what differentials did you want to bring to the table? And we talked a little bit about already, it was really just to have a formal education, I think was the first thing. And then um, it's funny, I called Elizabeth a, a couple months ago as I was working on uh, bits of a book that I'm finishing up and the history of it. And I was like, I remember I asked you, what was it that really motivated us to, to do the principles of movement? I mean, I think that was probably one of our most unique contributions to the industry was looking at principles that were um, re respected by the medical community, that were scientifically based, 
Um, you know, it wasn't evidence-based yet in the sense that we didn't have any research out there, but we were sure looking to connect with people who were doing research to be able to do that. So I think those were, at least from our last discussion, some of the main things. Can you think of anything else that was sort of motivating us to do something unique in the industry? Um, yes, I can amplify the points that you just made there and also um, bring, in, uh, bring in Ken's uh, perspective as well. Um, that I, given that I came, my introduction to Pilates was in a, a dance and sports medicine clinic where the emphasis was not on teaching the exact repertoire of Joseph H. Pilates. Instead, we had to immediately customize each exercise for each client. Shelley may mention of this earlier, for each patient and each client um, to create their, their best pathway, facilitate their pathway to the return of their movement life. So I had always had that perspective on Pilates. And then from your physical therapy education, you had the perspective on uh, movement as part, of a, as part of a therapy program, movement for rehabilitation. And um, uh, so we always brought that perspective on customizing the method, customizing the material for the client. That gave us access to a huge variety of um, exercise progressions and movement sequences that was not part of the conventional Pilates education. Yeah, we were really motivated to to bring that to um, clinical professionals and movement educators. And I think one of the things that I I probably took for granted back then, but certainly appreciate now, was the you know the crossover between your background elizabeth and my background that really was so completing so fulfilling of having you know just amazing movement experience that you bring in knowledge and education and bringing you know the science and and medical thing that you know we just always were we just naturally brought those two things together and you know i think i took it for granted a lot of times because i did have some dance background but it was just like realizing how if somebody had taken pilates and only does rehabilitation on it they're missing a whole bunch and if they only do the mm -hmm. classical they're missing a whole bunch and when you take that combination and you have you know this explorative movement mind that you have that creative mind that you always brought to the table of like well if you can't do it that way try it this way or you do it fine this way what happens if you try this and it was that that you know just amazing explorative thing that Shelley and I were talking about this of just how it has always been a thread deep uh, inside of Polestar is the idea of creativity, the idea of mm. finding solutions of movement. And so much of that had come from your background and your contribution, but it really was that mixture of those two that I think really just separated Polestar from a lot of other, you know, up and coming companies after us. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Kenny, you, you watched the whole thing morph. Any thoughts yeah. on that? I, well, I do, because I think the part that you guys um, haven't talked about yet is the fact that that um, you know the reason why it, I think it worked out so well was that there was a real hunger for this kind of training out in the world. I mean, when you think about how how your classes, your 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 your, your sessions filled up, and people just wanted to know, and and how relatively small amount of marketing and advertising was done, it was just that people wanted to know, and there was there was really no place to go until 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 you guys came along, and then and then and then how you were teaching was in a way that made sense to people in a way that they wanted to learn. And so I think yeah. that I think the timing and the matchup was perfect too. Yeah. And so I, I think that's I think that needs to be looked at. I think it was it was exciting. There was a real, real hunger for Pilates at that time. As there as there is now. Yeah. Well you see here on this slide also that we were stepping it up a notch and again the again the combination <laughs> of balanced body and pull star working together and having you know, professional photo shoots in, wow. yeah, professional photo shoots with, uh, you know, solid white backdrops and curved floors and our first exposure to uh, to all of that, you know, and actually filming and having an actual video um, that can sponsored and, and led for us to be able to, 
go another level of distribution. And you know what I remember, and, and again, just a moment of silence for uh, Mari Windsor, but I remember um, you know, thinking, wow, she's, she's selling Pilates on TV. You know, and we were all sort of, it was always that shock value of like, that can't be good. It's outside of our, it's outside of our normal box. And, mm -hmm. you know, and of course, Mari Windsor introduced Pilates to more millions of people than anybody else could have possibly done. And uh, incredibly grateful for that. And then I thought of, you know, the idea of the Allegro. And remember when we caught so much flack from people like, you can't teach a group class of 10 people on a Lego reformer. Right. And it's like, you teach 10 people in Matt? Yes. Do you teach 10 people in dance? Yes. And your point is, but it was like, you know, it was not in, it was not in the paradigm. And so there were a lot of things that were sort of pushing the paradigm. And I think the idea of video instruction was, way ahead of its time to have a library of mm -hmm. exercise content. And mm -hmm. that's what we're looking at there. Do you remember what year that was, Kenny? Any idea or Elizabeth? What does it say on the yeah, back of yeah. that? We, I think, I think um, Elizabeth did her, the, that very first video, that reformer techniques with Elizabeth Larkin That was right. I think it was right around 1990 because it was right around the beginning or just before Polestar, and that was yes. the first video, and then we did these shortly thereafter. Yes, and the, the copyright on here, Ken, is 1999. Okay, got it. But that, that, was, that was the entire Polestar that's, series, that's the, like whole the, the, the big library. Yeah. 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 And the pictures there, I think, were, it looks like um, February two, of uh, 2000 as well, so that was, is that right? Am I reading that date yes. correctly on there? The yeah, the, the, the photos on the right is that uh, uh, Shelley and I um, spent, a, spent a whole day in, um, I think it was Brent in a, in a Miami uh, studio. Oh, yeah. And we yeah, yeah, made, yeah. Uh, we shot all the, oh. all the um, exercises for what would be our super comprehensive um, Pole star mat with a uh, roller and ring program. That's mm -hmm. right. Shelly, you remember uh, what, what was the guy's name that was the photographer? Because we ended up doing more work with him later on. Uh, I don't even... I'll think of it in a second. Yeah, now, not, now that you, uh, Troy. Troy. Oh, Troy. I that believe. was it. Troy was the photographer. Both, yeah. yeah, we went to a big um, warehouse and yes. shot that. Yes. Dog was there, I think, for some of it. Some of it we yes. did reformer, um, and uh, yeah, the ring and roller. Yeah. All right, we're we're pretty much out of time, but I'd like to get through a few more pictures. And while we do that, I have a few more comments here that are coming in now. They're pouring in. Um, Sarah said, "Thank you all. Such lovely energy. I've just learned that from sept uh, from September this year. So I just learned about through circumstances." I will be full-time Pilates practitioner and spreading positive movement, finding my purpose. Thanks for all you do. Um, also said the Polestar Pilates model changed my life. Thank you for the three of you were meant to be together. Rosanna, is that why you changed from wood reformer to metal reformer? Um, oh. I'm not quite sure which picture she was alluding to, but I guess the Allegro. You mean the Dead Sea class? Mud? <laughs> I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure which we... <laughs> uh, I think it's probably looking at the at the going with the Allegros to do group classes, and that was the reason because we could stack them and stand them up and get them out of the way. And that was with you and Dov, uh, Dov Cohen. Yeah, um, Christy said these photos belong in the Pilates Legacy Project. So Christy, we'll be talking to you. We want to do something with you guys too. Like, there's so much great information out there that a lot of people just don't know about. Christine said hi everyone from Quebec. Um, back then, were you guys aware of the impact your work would have on the future? No way. That's a good question. <laughs> people ask that all the time. I'm like, I had no idea. No idea. Um, a, hand people, a handful of people who took um, early courses. Uh, Suzanne, I was lucky enough to take 1995 class, I think, in Sacramento. I first started Pilates at Bali, Total Fitness. We didn't bring up Bally's, but that was a big project for us when we brought the Allegro out and the fitness. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, that was with Elizabeth and Elizabeth videos. Thank you, Patty from Detroit. Um, Deborah said, thank you for everything. I was with Elizabeth for Polestar Matt weekend in New York City back in 99, great weekend. Uh, Leslie said, I owe all the VHS tapes for the rehab program. She owns all of them. I took the post rehab program in 2001 from Lisa Stoltz. She is a fabulous, inspiring teacher. And then I have a comment here. It says, hi, Brent, Elizabeth, and Ken. So nice to see you all together. I go way back with all of you, spending a week uh, a, speak, a week with Elizabeth at St. Francis and then attending one of the first weekend courses in Sacramento. Um, this is Donna Parisi. Oh, wow. Remember Donna. Donna. Yeah, hi, Donna. Thank oh. you for joining us today. Donna, I in looking for the Polestar memorabilia from St. Francis Hospital, Donna, I found your certificate of completion in my boxes <laughs> from your week with us. Oh, oh my God. You, you better send us be. a link I so need we to can send, send it, it to you. you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's fantastic. The Allegro series with uh, Davin. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, let's 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 just take a look at the last couple of pictures here, and then we'll we'll say a last couple of words to everybody, even if we go a little bit long. But I knew we'd go a little bit long today, so it's okay. Um, 2000. This was uh, again sort of moving up in our in our yeah. brochures. Yeah, a big brochure. Yeah. Yeah, that was a big move, and I think we we're, were using the people next door to me. We're doing our photo shoot and ads, I think, in off of K Street at that time. I think. Who was doing yeah, that, that, that work? Was that? that was Della. That was Della, Della, who was next door, who did that yeah. in the beginning. And then yeah. Wendy and Dane. Let's see the next slide. Oh, look at that. So that was one of our that courses. Was, yeah, you know, um, Brent, we, we, had, we had evolved from um, the spending the night at Kinko's with the stapler. And uh, now we had actual binders, binders with three hole punch. And th this is the um, this is the official um, binder that goes with the photos that uh, Shelley and I and you and Dov and I took at the warehouse in Miami. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Next slide. Well, <laughs> I'm going to give you a guess whose feet those are. Who do they belong to? So Shelley and El Elizabeth's feet on the large. I don't know if that's the wobble board or the large uh, rotating disc. It looks like it's the ro large rotating board. disc. Yeah, wobble board. Yeah. So, yeah. Some of the best feet in the industry. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, fun. Where's that? This was, I'll, I'll jump in here, nice Brent, I don't think. Bit. I don't think you were here for, you weren't in uh, Orlando for this. This was the IDEA conference. Uh, and the memorable thing was driving from Orlando to Miami um, with Ken and Elizabeth in the U-Haul truck um, and along the way making stops to drop off equipment at certain places and Cecilia Sarah's studio was one of those oh that goodness. I just connected with her um, and her daughter so fun memory. Wow. Shelley, I think that the, the three of us were going to meet Brent at the University of Miami because Brent, you were hosting, uh, producing the very first um, Polestar education course in your uh, in the physical at the therapy university. department. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, in yeah. the plumber building. Was that the one that the guy passed out in there? Was that different? <laughs> that was a different was a time. Different one? But... <laughs> oh yeah, that was that was when we really focused on our liability waivers. But it was I knew it was like the first or second one. All right, what do we have? What else do we have there? Oh, so funny. Oh, yeah. that was fun. Yeah, the Allegro shoot. Yes, exactly. You after the Idea Conference in Las Vegas, we stayed in Las Vegas. But we moved to this god awful um, casino hotel that was way off the strip because we could afford it. And uh, Brent, you and I were we were roommates, and um, in this hotel. And then we'd get up at early and then go down to the ballroom where Dov, uh, Dave Lippman, and the crew had set up the Allegros because we were doing the Pole Star Fitness Intensive. Yeah. And then at yeah. night we would rehearse um, with Dov Cohen. We'd rehearse for the um, Allegro video shoots that Balanced Body would use to launch 
Ken's um, patented Allegro One that changed the industry. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's go let's go to uh, let's see. This is oh wow. So here are our principles. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. There you see, I'm doing see. Uh, this is the picture I was looking for. Look how young David Littman looks there. Look how mm -hmm. dapper there. Nice job. Yeah. That was fun. That was um is it Red Rock? What was it called? The Absolutely. Red Rocks. Yeah. 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 Very cool. Next slide. That's Dob Cohen in the front and center there. Oh, that, <laughs> see this is this was the launch. This was the launch. This is still in Vegas. Yeah. Um Right, and this is where you're talking about going on the ballroom, and we had all of the Allegros. That's Serafino Ambrosio there, our licensee in Italy. It looks a lot like uh, um, Mel, Gibson. Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson. Yeah. Yeah. And then Mo Molini, Molini Seeker, who was uh, was Seeker. with us on that trip. Yeah. yeah. And this is yeah. where we saw the full uh, flamboyance of Serafino when he came out with the pineapple tops. And uh, I think you and I both were with our jaw down to the floor of like, is this going to be okay? And it seemed to be just fine. So <laughs> are we going to get sued? Yes. <laughs> All right. Hey, Ken's baggage and frozen food storage. Ken, yeah. Good pictures. So this was a Jerry meeting, Dutt. a big meeting that we had in Miami, inviting all kinds of Polestar people from all over the world. Yeah. Uh, so bringing in Donna Weyburn from Hong Kong, Serafino is there again, uh, Anne McMillan from um, from Canada. Yeah. Is that is that Nick? Who's standing behind uh, Nick, Nicola? Uh, I don't remember his name, but Nick and Nicole are in the next photo. And then I just oh, want to okay. definitely point out Sherry Betts with blonde hair. Yes. Yeah. Dave <laughs> Lippman. I'm feeding Dave Lippman. I still have Angela. something around my head. Angela Crowley, Cynthia. Next picture. Oh. There we go. Oh, that was everybody. Ken sitting there in front. Wow. Helen Mason. David. Is that Claudio? Up on the top back? Probably. And me. Yeah, that's, probably. yeah, I think that's Claudio. Yeah. Wow. Tracy Weibel, Sherry Betts, Angela Crowley, Donna Ritter, Lisa Stoltz, Alexander's there, Aaron Spector and Samantha Spector, Tom Bothorpe, Nicola Wiener. Nelly, Nelly's Nick, in the front. Nick there. and there's Nick and Nikki right there from Australia. They're our first licensees in Australia. Yeah. Wow. Mar Marilyn Mardini. And, and uh, Brent, I think sure. this was again at the University of Miami Physical Therapy Department because you yeah. were able to um, to host um, the all the Polestar education gatherings there. Yeah. 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 That was great. Great memory. Awesome. Oh, this was the guy on the far left, chiropractor from um, like Boca. West Palm Beach. West yeah. Palm Beach. Sent a lot Steven. of people. Steven, that's it. Yeah. Good. Good, good, good. Wow. Any more pictures in there before we uh oh that was the party. So that was at the house. Yeah. That was the circus, the, the circus, circus party. That was that was our very first whole star <laughs> experience conference. And this was at your house, Brent, right? That was yeah. at the house, yeah. 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 I remember Shelly and uh, Tracy Weibel doing their act out on the deck on the other side of the pool. That was really right. fun. We were yeah. Siegfried and Roy, and then in between us is a very little <laughs> Alina, <laughs> daughter. Who now is staying here on the farm for a month to give us the enjoyment of our granddaughter. So yeah. how time passes. Now her daughter's getting that size. <laughs> all right all right now it's just us well wow what a great trip down memory lane the, you know one of the other things that we introduced was the exam i think it was like 97 or 98 we introduced the first i think it was the first like comprehensive exam that we had uh 
that we provided in the Pilates community. I don't remember too many details on it. I just remember that we felt that was another one of those things that we felt like there needed to be some kind of competency for, you know, if we're going to be doing this education, there should be a competency tied to it. And so I think that was another unique thing that we brought to the industry was was competency measure. I don't know if any, Ken or Elizabeth, do you, do you remember anybody doing exams before before us? No, you, I don't. this is what you guys did. I mean, there, there really was nothing. That, that's, that, was the, that was the dilemma. I mean, uh, Ramana had a program in New York and, and nobody else really had any kind of a formal program at all. So, well, Stott, it, Stott, were, Myra had started somewhere in mid, mid to early 90s, but I don't think they had any exams, if I remember mm -hmm. correctly. Yeah, yeah, Boulder had their program that they were starting. And so I know that there were a lot of our colleagues that were out there that were teaching and had more authoritative programs that were evolving. Everybody was sort of evolving at that time. But well, good. Any last memories or things that you'd want to share with the, the audience? Thoughts of our pioneer journey together? Well, I, can think I, think, of, I, I was going to, I can think of tons of hotel rooms that the three of us shared a room. Well, <laughs> Yeah. And I remember carrying Elizabeth's bags a lot of places. I was the young one on the totem pole. <laughs> you carry those bags. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, I, I can remember when we were attending a an I Adams meeting, which was in, in the um in the Washington DC area, would have been in Maryland. And we and of course for economic reasons, um we always stayed in the same hotel room like we didn't have individual rooms we were the three of us in the same hotel room and ken was wearing his some um, striped pajamas oh, I remember and that. brent brent was wearing his tie-dyed pajamas and it's amazing to me but i cannot remember <laughs> i can't remember my pajamas so there was a there was a, a <laughs> fire, fire alarm. <laughs> a fire alarm went off in the hotel, and so we had to exit our room and go and stand out in on the grass in our PJs. <laughs> what was I wearing? I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to remember myself, but I remember that fire alarm. I remember being really uncomfortable, like we're in our pajamas outside. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, we had I just remember being so tired and when was the fire? Because there was no fire. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say thanks to, you know, we can be and married to Roz and me to Lizette were incredibly understanding of the fact that financially is like, look, <laughs> sometimes there's four of us, like when Shelly started traveling with us or others, I was like, we just can't afford a room in New York to be in three different rooms. It's like, this is our... Sure. This is our reality. This is how we traveled, and we certainly it traveled. Deal. It was no, no, big deal. no. That was the thing. It was. It wasn't like it was. I mean, I didn't see it as being any giant sacrifice. You know, we just. It's just, just, just what we did, and it, it made us able to go to New York, and it made yeah. us able to go traveling and stuff. We were so lean. I mean, you know, we just kept the cost down to a minimum, and. I remember Elizabeth and I running across the Chicago airport underneath. We were late on a connecting flight. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, it was, that was a long run, but we ran the whole way. <laughs> it's like so many times yeah. of things like that. I know. We did it. Yeah. You know, it's, you know, it's funny is I, I watch Nicole now, who is um, pretty much directing, you know, education for Polestar now in the United States. And when I see her teach and her mannerisms, they're actually so much like yours, Elizabeth. And I, she never studied with me. She always studied with other people and with Shelly and with Donna. But I, when I hear her voice and I watch her mannerisms of teaching, I think of, you know, how I enjoyed watching you teach. But uh, she's she's evolved to be a beautiful teacher, and and uh, appreciate you taking the time that you have to to talk to her. I think that's been a real pleasure for her too. All right. Well, any less, you know, I, I just want to say that, you know, that my memories with you guys working with you guys and, and still to this day are my best memories in the Pilates world. Um, you know, we, we, we really, really, really did a lot together. And it was, was astonishing to me as we did so much together, but, 
but we didn't even realize how much we were doing. And we didn't really understand the impact of what we were what we were going to do. It was, kind of like, it was kind of like we were just kind of falling forward and always ending up in the right place. You know, it, yeah. it, was, just, it was just kind of amazing. And, uh, and, and I just, uh, I have such great memories and just and feel honored to work with both you guys. So um, I look forward to working with you guys in the future for the next billion years, as long as we can yeah. hold up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Elizabeth, any last thoughts? Ah, I'll just um, echo from Ken. And I'm Brent, Brent I'm so grateful um, that you had the, the idea to bring the three of us together um, to have this conversation. It's just uh, been, been absolutely wonderful. And uh, well, I'm sure that many good things will come as a result of it. Well, I'm looking forward to contributing to your, yours and uh, Madeline Black's new book that's coming out so excited to be part of that yes. and you know it's a time of uniting i mean we're in such disarray in the in the world right now and the the message that needs to come out is to unite and leadership needs to unite and and um you know i think it's just the issue of consciousness and awareness and i mean i think the thing that i appreciate the most about both of your examples to me is is, is that is being conscientious and being you know, an aware citizen of the roles that we play in life and being able to, you know, make decisions based on how our actions impact others. You know, I think of, you know, Balanced Body is a very ethical uh, business and you've been a great role model to me in business. And, you know, Elizabeth, you've always been in that spiritual space of being mindful and being in tune. And I appreciate both of you very much for those examples that you set for me in both business and behavior and and um you know i aspire to to continue to follow that so appreciate it very much and uh with that being said just talking to everybody out there just we we thank you so much um you know we would be nothing if it wasn't for people who wanted to learn and people who aspired to be great teachers and and every time that we get to teach we learn more so it's it never ends it's always a uh, a learning opportunity. I don't remember who told us this, but said when you when you stop learning, you should stop teaching. So um, may we always keep learning. May we unite ourselves together and stand for good things and for equality and stand for justice. And and uh, I think our role is more on the healing side and the peace side. Uh, and we're definitely going to need a lot of healing and a lot of peace after the pain that we've suffered, both from the COVID and from the uh, disruption and the in and the injustice that we suffer from throughout the world and that we might be that that beacon of light one thing i did want to bring uh, to attention of everybody is just thinking of even in our own profession the imbalance that exists in our profession and you know how we can be more conscientious of bringing more balance of of um volunteering more and being able to, you know, if you think of everybody that's on this uh, podcast, on this on this webinar, if everybody that's on it or that registered for it, so we're about four or 500 people, if all of us donated one hour of Pilates a week or one hour of service somewhere a week, I mean, that's 500 hours of service a week. That's 2000 hours of service a month that we could be providing and, um, you know, bringing joy and awareness and consciousness to others that might not otherwise have access. So keep your eyes open for opportunities. Always seek to be aware, be safe, be happy. Thank you again, Elizabeth. Thank you, Ken, for taking the time. Love Thank you again. both. Appreciate it. And uh, love you in the audience. So we'll see you next week. We're going to introduce uh, a new set of workshops that's looking at pathokinesiology. So if you're interested in, you know, how pathology affects movement, that's going to be the introduction. It'll be the first time we do a workshop on a webinar. So we hope you come. Again, it's free. Tell your friends, and we'll see you next week. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Brent. Thanks, Elizabeth. Appreciate Thanks, it. Shelley. Thanks to the three Bye. of you. Bye. All right. Thank you, Shelly.